Okay, so get ready for this one. Okay. We are going to do a deep dive into the case of Kent Trail Golden. <laughs> and it's a wild one. Sounds good. Because we're talking prescription drug fraud. Okay. We're talking identity theft. Yeah. We're yeah. talking forgery. Mm -hmm. And it all culminates in something called a global resolution. Right. Which, as you can imagine, gets pretty complex yes. and involves state and federal courts oh. all trying to figure out mm -hmm. how to deal with this guy. What's really interesting is how it goes so far beyond just a typical drug bust. Yeah. This isn't just somebody with a couple too many pills. Right. This is somebody running a whole a, a whole operation here. And speaking of the operation, yes. the details are where it gets wild. Yeah. Um, we've got sources laying out this pretty elaborate scheme. Mm -hmm. And it seems like Golden had a real thing for the last name White. Okay. Like there's Gwendolyn White, Betus White, Bethel White. It's like he was working his way through a phone book or something. Absolutely. Just picking out whites. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. It is almost comical. Yeah. But at the same time, it shows just how much effort he was putting into creating these identities. Right. And it was very deliberate. Mm -hmm. And and remember that whole detail about the phone calls? Yes. To the police? Yeah. With someone pretending to be like an elderly woman. Oh, right. Right. Whose prescriptions were stolen. Yeah. Yeah. Multiple pharmacies reported those calls. Yeah. And the pharmacists all said that the voice sounded the same. So it wasn't just a fake name on paper. This was like a whole character he was playing. That's right. Like that's next level commitment to the con. Absolutely. Wow. And then it escalates from okay. right there. Mm -hmm. uh, he starts impersonating a real doctor in Provo, really? Dr. James Woodmany, okay. to call in prescriptions for promethazine with codeine. Wait, so now he's like pretending to be a doctor? Yeah. This guy's got guts. He does. But how does he think he's going to get away with that? Well, that's where the scheme starts to unravel. Okay. When the police search his place, mm. They found all these prescription bottles. Yeah. And one of them uh -huh. was even made out to Caroline White. Oh, wow. With Dr. Woodmany's name on it. No way. Yeah. Wow. And then a whole stash of promethazine with codeine. Okay. Some with labels, some without. Oh, wow. So it's pretty damning evidence. Yeah, like a trail of breadcrumbs leading right back to him. That's right. And you know what else is interesting about this? What's that? The sources say that on top of all of this, uh -huh. Golden was already on federal probation. Oh, wow. For something else. Okay. You know, so, so that must made things extra tricky for him. Right. Legally speaking. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Federal probation comes with its own set of restrictions right. and consequences. Yes. And that actually, as you'll see, plays a significant role in how this case ultimately plays out. Okay, so we've got a pretty good picture now yes. of the crimes themselves. Right. But now let's talk about yeah. this whole no contest plea thing. All right. What does that even mean in this situation? That's a good question. Yeah. So no contest plea is kind of like a middle ground. Okay. In the legal system. Mm -hmm. It's not admitting guilt outright. Okay. But he is acknowledging that the prosecution has enough evidence to convict him. So why not just plead guilty then oh. if they've got him dead to rights? Well, think about it this way. Okay. Pleading guilty is basically like making a confession. Yeah. And that confession could then be used against you uh -huh. in other legal situations, huh? like a civil lawsuit. Oh, I see. So by pleading no contest, yeah. he avoids that risk gotcha. while still accepting the consequences of those criminal charges. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a way to kind of protect himself down the line. That's right. But how does this all tie into that global resolution thing that we mentioned uh, earlier? Well, that's where things get really fascinating. Okay. Because remember, we're not just dealing with one set of charges. Right. There are state charges in multiple counties. Yeah. Plus those federal charges stemming from his probation violation. Oh, right, right. So global resolution means all of these different legal entities wow. have to work together okay. to figure out a solution. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's like this big legal jigsaw puzzle right. trying to make all the pieces fit. That's a good way to put it. So what did they end up deciding on? Well, in the end, they hit Golden with a $25,000 fine. Okay. And reduced his felony charges to misdemeanors. That sounds like a pretty good deal considering everything. Well, there's a catch. Oh, there's always a catch. There is. Okay. The agreement also stated that he wouldn't get any credit for time served. Wait, really? Why not? Yeah, you would think. I mean, isn't that standard practice? Usually. Yeah. But here's where his federal case comes into play. Okay. He was already facing a separate federal sentence. Yeah. Of 27 months in prison. 
So the state court was basically saying, yeah. look, you're already going away for a while. Right. We're not even going to worry about giving you credit exactly. for the little bit of time you served here. You got it. Okay. That's essentially what happened. Oh. But it gets even more complicated. Oh, gosh. Because after he served those 27 months, yeah. he's looking at another 60 months okay. of supervised probation. 60 months of probation? Yeah. That's five years. That is. After prison. After prison. That's a pretty long leash. It is. Even if it comes with some restrictions. Well, it's not just any probation. Oh, okay. We're talking no drugs, no alcohol, no weapons. Wow. Basically a complete lifestyle overhaul. Okay. And regular check-ins with a probation officer. Okay. To make sure he's following the rules. So they're really trying to set him up for success. Right. But also making it clear that there are serious consequences if he minkas up again. Did the judge say anything about all of this? Actually, yes. Oh, okay. The judge specifically commented on Golden's potential, okay. expressing hope that he could really turn things around okay. after serving his time. So even though he is facing some pretty serious consequences, right. there's this underlying sense of optimism, Yes, this belief that he could still make something of himself. Absolutely. It's almost like the judge is saying, look, I see that you messed up, yeah. but also see that you're capable of more than this. Right. Now it's up to you to prove me right. It really is a fascinating glimpse into the human side of the legal system. Yeah. You know, it's not just about punishment. Mm -hmm. It's also about recognizing that potential for change and rehabilitation. And that brings us to a really important question. Okay. How do we as a society balance accountability yeah. with compassion mm -hmm. when we're dealing with cases like this, right. especially when addiction is involved? Absolutely. That's a big one. It is. And it's definitely something that we need to unpack further. Definitely. But for now, we're going to take a quick break and come back to that in just a minute. Sounds good. So join us for part two of this deep dive as we explore those complexities of addiction okay. and its impact on the legal system. Looking forward to it. 